My name is Ebba Russell. I'm a producer at Fictioneers. Um, I'm based uh, in Penarth, which is a little seaside town just outside Cardiff in South Wales. I'm Tom Mahoney and I am the lead Unity developer at Fictioneers. And I'm based out of my, my bedroom in Romerkin and Taff in South Wales. My role at Fictioneers is producer and I guess in many ways uh, it's a similar role to a producer in film and TV, insofar as we have a story, we have a script. I'm a Unity developer, which means I'm, uh, I work inside the Unity game engine. and We're responsible for creating the augmented reality content for the big fix-up. I've been involved in the project since the very beginning. In fact, even before the beginning, uh, before Fictioneers was fully formed, and certainly before we had the project uh, running with Armand. And I originally came on as a Unity developer, so mid-level slash senior developer um, brought on to just help make what uh, what was envisioned for the project. So the team I'm a part of is the Unity team. It's quite a mixed bag of skills because the Unity role itself is quite a generalist role and it spans across programmers, artists, animators, and they're all kind of in this mixing pot. There's a number of creative uh, processes and systems involved in the delivery of our project, but the one I think that's most pertinent to my role uh, is the Must platform, the multi-user storytelling platform, which is a bespoke platform built uh, to deliver stories in our project. So that's been great to be sort of like the first case user in the Must platform. As a R&D project, the kind of emphasis of the project was really riding the the kind of leading edge of technology. So when it comes to like the technical processes and the systems we use, we're trying to use as much new stuff as possible to show what is possible with what we're trying to do. Now, when it comes to the project itself, the change from going for a completely outside experience in the parks in a big finale in Bristol to everything being at home, that was a huge change for my team. So. It involved us looking more at things like, okay, we used to be able to place these huge rockets, contraptions. We didn't have to worry about how big they were because they were outside. Um, now we need to think about, okay, how big a surface do they need? How far can we make it, like how small can we make a rocket before you're not able to interact with the buttons on it? And things like that had to come into consideration. And the finale, that big Bristol finale, we still wanted it to be in Bristol. So what we had was from Phantasma, one of our partner companies, we had a map made up of the area. What we would have used for authoring content in engine, we can now use to kind of create a mini map for the users to play on. Um, like Edward said, post the, the delivery of the big fix up, we're now working on our Grubfest project, which is, essentially taking that act three from the big fix up and bringing it to the outside world. Um, we have until June this year to finish that. And it is, it's not so much starting a new project. It's more taking what we've learned from the big fix up, adapting that and going for that original pre COVID deliverable that, that we were looking for that kind of majestic, huge AR experience that we can bring to cities. And, um, yeah, it's exciting and um, obviously we, we plan to bring it to multiple cities and we're looking at tools now to develop the way that we can roll it out in a much more streamlined fashion to multiple cities. So we build it for one, but those systems that we make can then be applied to another and another and we can keep that rolling forever. So although it was a big change going from the outdoor to the indoor, the indoor has benefited us in being able to develop and test all of these things inside our house as opposed to putting a giant rocket down outside every time I make a build and now we can take that stuff and quite streamlined or hopefully quite streamlined transition that to the outside world again 
COVID permitting. We're no longer in an office environment and you know to focus on on the on the negative first of all um not to be sat with your colleagues uh makes it harder to um to communicate um and i think there's also a great deal of learning that happens by osmosis you overhear something and you go hang on are you working on that well blah 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 but being able to kind of watch from or, or watch the conversations unfolding online through our slack groups through discord and seeing how they they, they talk to these huge tech companies and just open so many doors and so many partnerships. Like it's, it's something, it's definitely not my forte. I, I'm more of a code monkey, a code monkey at my desk as opposed to the sweet talker of these, these businesses. It's really weird how COVID has actually brought us together in some respects, insofar as we have ceremonies. Like every day there is, um, you know, normally at 9.30, we, ha we have a stand-up where we're all on video, all chatting and listening to what each other is doing. And I think if we were working in an office, um, you'd still have those ceremonies, but you might be more tempted to, to not attend or to get on with another job that you're doing and stuff like that. There's something about the whole working from home and, and the expectations on delivery that you can't not turn up at these meetings because people think you're still in bed.